Hi, today we are going to study bubble salt. First we will see what do we mean by sorting using bubble salt followed by an example and working of the same followed by an algorithm for bubble salt and its analysis. So let us quickly start with bubble sort. So bubble sort is a sorting algorithm which is used to sort elements of a given list or an array. So it every time bubbles up the highest or the largest element at the end of the array. That means largest element bubbles up or we can say sorted up at the highest index of an array at the end of each pass for n elements it will repeat itself n minus 1 times. So at the end only one element will be left and that element will be sorted by itself. It compares basically two adjacent elements that means at index number j and j plus 1. Two adjacent elements are compared. If first element is greater than the later element, they are getting swapped. So that the largest element will take its place at the next or the last location. Let us see an example of bubble sort and how it works. Consider this is an array of five elements. That's why index is starting from 0 to 4. The elements of array are 50, 30, 20, 40 and 10 respectively. Initially index is initialized to 0 that is i equals to 0. In our second step we initialize j as our starting index also. So here j is also is equal to 0. So element at j is 50. So index j plus 1 will become the very next element or the next index that is element 30. Now these elements are getting compared. Is my first element greater than the second element? That means if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1. If this condition holds true, we need to swap elements of these two positions. So only if 50 is greater than 30, which is true in our case, we are going to swap 50 and 30 respectively. Hence, 30 has came before 50 element. Now we will increment our index j. That's why instead of initializing j, we replace that statement with the help of for loop. For j is equal to 0 to some limit. That is, is equal to n minus 2. We will later see why we have written n minus 2 but not n minus 1. Our last index is n minus 1 but we always make use of j plus 1 index. So if we use n minus 1 as our last index, j plus 1 will might point to an element which is not present inside the list. So we have started for loop of j from 0 to n minus 2. And inside this loop, for each index of j, we are comparing element a of j with element a of j plus 1. If element at j is greater than j plus 1, we are going to swap them. Now in our case, this case, j is pointing to index number 1, which is compared with j plus 1 element, which is, is equal to 40. Is 50 greater than 40? If condition is true, we have to swap these elements. And j is incremented in next pass. Now j is pointing to at element number 2. And j plus 1 is element at 3. Is 50 greater than 20? If yes, we have to swap these elements. Again, we have to increment our j. Now j is pointing to element number 3. And j plus 1 is pointing to element number 4. Is 50 greater than 10? If condition is fulfilled, we have to swap these elements. Now elements are swapped. Now one point is that do have, we have to again increment j. Remember, if I increment j at this particular moment, j plus 1 will point to an element which is not part of array list.
So here to for five elements we have came up j is equal to 3. That is for n elements it must go up to n minus 2. After this particular moment of time, my 50 is the greatest element along among all the elements of array, which is bubbled up at the highest index of array. So 50 is now sorted. Now we have to repeat same process so that next largest element can come before 50 element. So instead of writing a simple loop, again we have initialized j and we have also initialized j plus 1. And we are going to compare them. That is my j greater than or equal to j plus 1. So here this j and j plus 1 are initialized and they are going to get compared how many times. That is being controlled by for loop of i elements. So here for i is equal to 0 to n minus 2. We have to do j is equal to 0 to n minus i minus 2. And every time we will compare a of j with a of j plus 1. Here 30 is greater than 40 condition is false. That means we need not to swap these two elements. We simply increment our j index. Now j is 40 and j plus 1 element is 20. Is 40 greater than 20? Condition is true. So we have to swap these elements. Again, j is incremented. j is element number 2 and j plus 1 is element number 3. Is 40 greater than 10? Yes, condition is true. So we have to swap these two elements. Now again, do we have to increment our j index in this case? If I am going to increment our j index in this case, j plus 1 will point to an element which is already sorted. So there is no need to perform comparison in that location. So here j is now finally arrived at 2 and we have to stop our comparison or number of paths. That's why j will always stop at one location which is before of the last path. That's why we have initialized j to 0 and progressed it up to n minus i minus 2. Now in this case 40 is already sorted. So next time our j will always start from very first location and reach up to only one location before of last pass of its own position. So let us see next part. Again, j is initialized to index number 0. j plus 1 is at index number 1. Is 30 greater than 20? Condition is true. So, let us swap these elements. j is incremented and j plus 1 is at index number 2. Is 30 greater than 10? Condition is again true. We have to swap these elements. Now we will no more increment our j so that j plus 1 will not point to the sorted element. So here my pass number 3 will end. 3, 30 is, at the end of this pass, 30 is already sorted. Now again start j from 0th index. j plus 1 index is index number 1. Is 20 greater than 10? Condition is true. So we will swap these two elements and j is j plus 1 location is already sorted. Now at this particular moment, n minus 1 elements are sorted. That means out of 5, 4 elements are sorted. But the conclusion over here, the left, the only left element which is only a single element which is sorted by itself. So we need not to compare a single element with any other element. It is sorted by itself. So using inside a bubble sort for n minus 1 elements we are having only n minus 1 passes. For n elements we have n minus 1 passes. And in each pass we have to compare any two adjacent elements. If larger element is coming before smallest element, we have to swap them. Let us see algorithm for bubble sort. Bubble sort takes an input, an array A from index 0 to n minus 1. 
Inside, we have to generate some passes. For that, we are using variable i. So, for i is equal to 0 to n minus 2. For each j is equal to 0 to n minus i minus 2, we have to compare element at j and element at j plus 1. That means, if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1, swap these two elements. Uh, here at this particular line, you can directly make use of swap function or you can write three lines or two lines of swapping two elements. The comparison will be performed i times into j times and our elements of an array will be sorted. Let us perform analysis of bubble sort. Here input size is n which is nothing but number of elements in our list. In our example that we have seen, number of elements were 5. So, we will say n is equal to 5. The only elementary or basic operation we have performed in this algorithm is swap algorithm. The only basic operation that we have used is swap operation. So, here number of steps we have taken is outer loop into number of inner loop steps into basic operation. There is only one basic operation that is our swap function. Outer loop is a, our i loop which is initializing i from 0 and goes up to n minus 2. Into j loop which is starting or initialized from 0 to going up to n minus 2 minus i and into basic operation is 1. So, our Initial condition will look like this, summation of i0 to n minus 2, summation of j0 to n minus 2 minus i of 1. Here, summation of 1 from some smaller limit to upper limit is upper limit minus lower limit plus 1. For example, summation of 0 to 1, 0 to n of 1 is equal to n minus 0 plus 1. So, similarly, summation of 0 to n minus 2 minus i of 1 is upper limit that is n minus 2 minus i minus lower limit that is minus 0 plus 1. Here, if we solve this particular equation, we come up with n minus 1 minus i. So, we are going to first solve our innermost summation sign. So, here... Summation sign of summation 1 is replaced by equation n minus 1 minus i. Now here n minus 1 is separated by a summation sign. Minus sign of i is also taken out. So we have decomposed our mathematical expression of summation. So it will become like summation of i0 to n minus 2 of n minus 1 minus summation of 0 to n minus 2 of i. Now from very first, here in this particular equation n minus 1 is common because it doesn't have i variable which is going to change. So we will take n minus 1 outside. That's why our first term becomes summation of i 0 to n minus 2 of 1. We will solve summation 1 as upper limit minus lower limit plus 1. So, n minus 2 minus 0 plus 1 is n minus 1. Now, second term is summation of i. Now, how to solve summation of i? Summation of i from 0 to n is given as n into n plus 1 by 2. That is upper limit into upper limit plus 1 by 2. So, summation of 0 to n minus 1 of i is equal to upper limit that is n minus 2 into upper limit my plus 1 that is n minus 2 plus 1 will divide by 2. So, that is nothing but n minus 2 into n minus 1 divided by 2. So, that is getting substituted as our second term. First term is n minus 1 into n minus 1. And second term is n minus 2 into n minus 1 by 2. 
let us take n minus 1 as our common term. So, we are only left with term as 2 into n minus 1 minus n minus 2. If we are going to solve our second or bracket term, it will come up with n by 2. So, here the final answer we get is n square by 2 minus n by 2. So, the complexity of bubble sort is theta of n square or I can say big O of n square. That is the bubble sort analysis. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Tobia signing out.